Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 105, and what I'd like to do today is some level 2 sample problems with Coulomb's Law. Specifically, I want to look at problems where we're dealing with three objects. Now, we'll start with a fairly easy one where the three objects are in a straight line, but then we'll take it to the next level and do a practice problem where we have the three objects that are charged in a triangular pattern. And what we're going to have to worry about is the vector summation of the answers. It's not going to be a mere um, methodology of finding the answer and then just putting it down. We're going to have to use vectors in order to solve for the final resultant. So let's look at those two problems now and see if we can solve some more difficult practice problems. Thank you. Now let's do a sample problem dealing with the electrostatic force. Now first we're going to find the electrostatic force of a proton and electron a millimeter apart. And if we start with our equation, k, q, q over r squared, we realize that k is 9 times 10 to the 9, newton meter squared over coulomb squared. The charge of the proton is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The charge of the electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we all divide that by a millimeter. Now we have to remember to get rid of the milli. So it's 1 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. And you have to square it. So if I take out my calculator. I have 9e9 times 1.6e negative 19 times 1.6 e negative 19. I could have squared that, but I didn't. I hit enter for that, and then I'm hitting divide 1 e negative 3 squared. And when I do that, I have 2.3 times 10 to the negative 22 newtons. Now, the sign of that should be negative. And if we have a negative sign, it's attractive. Now, we found the electrostatic force between the proton and the electron. Let's find the gravitational force. Now, the formula looks the same. Big G, m, m over r squared. Now, G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meter squared over kilogram squared. All right, mass of the proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, all over 1 millimeter, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. So let's look at the calculator again. 6.67 e negative 11 times 1.67 e negative 27 times 9.11 e negative 31 hit equal divide that by 1 e negative 3 squared and my final answer is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the negative 61 newtons so the gravitational force is much smaller than the electrostatic force this is an attractive force and when we're dealing with objects of this kind of charge, this close apart, their gravitational force of attraction is negligible. Negative 61 minus 22 in terms of the order of magnitude, there's a difference of 39 zeros between these two. So 39 zeros, I'm not even going to write all the zeros, but that's a pretty big difference right here. So the gravitational force of attraction between a proton and an electron is much smaller than the electrostatic force. All right. In this problem, what we're going to do is try to find the net force on particle B. And A is going to apply a force on B, and so is C. So we're going to have to find the force that each of these pairs applies on B, and then see if they combine or um, subtract from one another. The first thing we need to do is get rid of these plus 4, plus 2, and minus 3. 
because all that's telling us is the number of excess electrons and protons. So remember, our elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So if we multiply that by 4, 1.6 to the negative 19 times 4, we get 6.4 to the negative 19. So this 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs plus 2 times 1.6 to the negative 19 is 3.2 and minus 3 is negative 4.8. So that's our first order of business. Second order of business is realizing these are nanometers, 5 nanometers and 8 nanometers. So let's get rid of the nanos and replace them with times 10 to the negative 9 for each. So the distance is 5 times 10 to the negative 9 meters between A and B, and 8 times 10 to the negative 9 meters between B and C. Now we're going to look at each separately. Let's look at AB first. And we'll find the electrostatic force between them, K, Q, Q over R squared. And 9 times 10 to the 9 times 6.4 to the negative 19 times 3.2 to the negative 19 all over. All right, and the distance between them is 5 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, and we have to square it. So 9e9 times 6.4e negative 19 times 3.2e negative 19. I'm going to hit equal for that. Then I'm going to divide it by 5e to the negative 9 squared, and I'm getting 7.4 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. So what I'm going to do is write that here, 7.4 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. And now let me erase the work, and we'll do the same for B and C. So let's do BC here. All right, same equation, same format. Let me write it here, 9 times 10 to the 9, Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared times B is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. C, 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs, negative, all over 8 times 10 to the negative 9 meters squared. All right, 9, E9 times 3.2 e negative 19 times 4.8 e negative 19 divided by 8 e negative 9 squared. I'm getting 2.16 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. And that answer is negative. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the number here, 2.16 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. And if I draw B, let's think about what direction A is going to push. Since it's the same side sign, it's going to be repulsive. So A is going to push B to the right. So the force from A is moving to the right. B and C are attractive, so C is going to pull B also to the right. So. If we just worry about signs, because this would have been a positive and this was a negative, then what the natural tendency to do would be to subtract the numbers, just 7.4 minus 2, so you get around 5. But because the negative sign and the positive sign just tell us whether or not they're attractive or repulsive, we have to watch out for them. And I'm always going to draw a free body diagram and show the direction of the forces on the diagram. So in this case, I need to take both numbers and need to add them together. So 2.16 to the negative 11, E negative 11, plus 7.4 E negative 11 will get me my final answer, which is 9.56 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. And that answer will be to the right.
So although we have the right signs when we deal with the Coulomb's Law equation, it only tells us whether or not they're attractive or repulsive. We have to go back to the real problem, the actual directions of the problem, in order to determine whether or not they push or pull the object in question. So in this case, B would have the force on B would be 9.56 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons to the right. It would be pushed to the right.